representatives assessed the findings of an investigative report on the controversial contract award of the $470 million CCTV security system in Lagos and Abuja. Chairman of the House Ad Hoc Committee on the CCTV Contract Investigation, Ahmed Yerima, says that though the Chinese contractor ZTE Nigeria Limited should refund monies misapplied during the takeoff of the contract, government must not abandon the Chinese-funded project. The lawmaker further implored the executive arm of government to direct the Nigerian Communications Commission to release the 450 megahertz frequency to the NSA's office to launch the project in view of prevailing national security threats. The bulk of the project involves a system, a network, that is responsible for transmitting data, video conferences between police stations and uh, posts throughout the country, and the excess capacity of 1,500,000 telephone lines, which could be used by the government. Therefore, the essence of this report is really to harmonize the whole system, the security network of the country, where you can be able to, at the same time, be utilized by different federal agencies. I should not be commercialized. This is our recommendation. The beneficiaries of this are different groups. The Office of the National Security Advisor, the Nigerian Police, the Customs Service, NNPC, and uh, many arms of government, the Minister of Interior, they should all utilize this network for their communications and security services. And uh, another thing is we have to look at the process of acquiring the whole equipment. When you acquire those equipment from the ZTE China, the government didn't give any money didn't allot any amount of money for the takeoff. That really made it redundant for years. Now, with this passing of this uh, investigative report, I'm sure the government must adhere to the recommendations of giving a takeoff fund. That's number one. Also, to train the capable staff that will run the system. At the same time, we discovered in the process of the investigation that out of the 2,000 cameras in Lagos and Abuja, only about 40 of them are functional. Meanwhile, the National Assembly during the week held an interactive meeting with the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, as well as the Budget Office. At that meeting, officials of the Budget Office told members of the Joint National Assembly Committee on Appropriation that the federal government has so far released the sum of 5.1 trillion naira out of the 6.06 .06 trillion passed by the National Assembly in the 2016 budget. Speaking at the meeting, the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adosha, told committee members that despite the shortfall in revenue in 2016, the federal government has so far released 870 billion naira for capital expenditure, excluding the proceeds from the euro bond. However, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation sought to know if the Minister of Finance diverted funds from loans to finance personnel expenditure rather than capital expenditure. From the presentation given to us by the AGF, he only applied 870 million, uh, billion to the capital budget. And I kept asking the DG and the Minister of State Budget whether uh, this borrowing, which are already affected, or which, is, which comes up to almost uh, 1.8, uh, almost 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 1 trillion have been diverted to finance uh, the current and personal cost. The question about the application of borrowings is relevant, um, but I don't think the word divert is the right word. Um, as you know, there's been a significant revenue shortfall this year. So it is not possible when you have a revenue shortfall to completely ring fence your, your borrowings for capital because you have a revenue shortfall and you have to pay your salaries. That having been said, the figure of 870 billion which you have um, cited does not include the proceeds of the Eurobond. We are yet to release those. So if you add those proceeds, you'll go over the one trillion mark. So the, the shortfall is not as big as it may look uh, on the surface. So there's been no diversion. We've simply tried within a very difficult period, and as you remember, the um, production volumes went down below one, one million barrels a day during some periods, and yet we've been able to keep paying salaries. We don't owe salaries. We've kept paying pensions. We've kept funding our statutory obligations, judiciary, National Assembly, INEC, and so on and so forth. And, you know, so obviously, I, I, I actually think, you know, we've really shown resilience this year in terms of how we've been able to balance the books and still do more than one trillion capital.
Now let's take a look at some of the other activities in the National Assembly during the week. Explosive allegations characterized proceedings in the House of Representatives as lawmakers moved to unravel the mystery behind the diversion of billions of dollars in illicit crude oil exports. After a whistle was blown during plenary, a new investigation is now underway concerning the fraudulent award of oil export inspection contracts at the Federal Ministry of Finance. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Eyes have it. Lawmakers say oil export inspection licenses are cornered by officials of the Federal Ministry of Finance and illegally awarded to inexperienced firms who are said to be enabling illicit oil traders. Companies are pre-qualified. Our names we are, um, we are sent by the ministry to the Bureau for Public Procurement. So the Bureau will now look at it and ensure that they comply with due process. But the names that were sent by the ministry to the Bureau for Public Procurement were, you know, marred with fraud and some irregularities. In fact, the Bureau discovered that some of these companies were not PENCOM compliance. Some don't even have PENCOM certificate at all. So what the Bureau simply did was to write back to the ministry, informing them of this irregularity. But to my surprise, when I was going through the document, that's the response of the Ministry of Finance. They insisted, in a very sweet, uh, swift, they, in, they insisted that the Bureau should go ahead and certify these unqualified companies. So, Mr. Speaker. As the House fixes its attention on the funding of institutions relevant to government's economic reform drive, representatives say that 7 billion naira worth of annual operating losses at the Bank of Agriculture in recent years indicates that 1.7% of the 2017 budget currently being proposed for the agriculture sector is grossly insufficient for true reform. The two shareholders, the Ministry of Finance Incorporated and the Central Bank of Nigeria should pay up their share capital with regards in line with the extant provision of the law setting up BOA. While investigations aim to end losses accrued by previous administrations, lawmakers simultaneously set sights on diversifying an economy aspiring to become one of the world's largest.